There are some players that were great in the old days that perhaps wouldn't be as great if they played in today's game. There are players that weren't necessarily great in the era they played in, but would probably fit in better in today's game. And then there are guys who would be great no matter what era they played in. Charles Barkley was one of those players that would be great regardless of the era he played in. In fact, one could argue that he was way ahead of his time as far as someone so big and strong also being extremely skilled and versatile. If he played in today's game, I think he'd be a blend of Zion Williamson, a mid-career version of Blake Griffin, and a much shorter Giannis Antetokounmpo. Let's break down his game throughout his playing career. The first thing that really pops out at me rewatching him, particularly in his younger years, was his ability to handle the ball up the court and make plays on the run. He had so many coast to coast dunks, and while he wasn't necessarily a creative ball handler, he had a firm dribble while accelerating ahead, either in a straight line or while swerving in and out of traffic. He flew down the court with so much relentlessness and determination. He was a freight train when he ran the floor. Like Zion in a way, he had so much explosiveness in his game, especially in the 80s when he was with the Philadelphia 76ers. That's when it really stood out, especially against the competition in the NBA at that time. One of the criticisms of Barkley was his height at the position he played, which was generally power forward. He was listed at about 6'5". He was often called a tweener, but because of his blend of athleticism, agility, power, and finesse, he generally outplayed his opponents. He had this knack for clearing out space and finishing with authority. A lot of his baskets throughout his career were follow-ups after gathering offensive rebounds. He was a monster on the glass. In fact, he averaged over 10 rebounds in every season other than his rookie year. He led the league in rebounding in the 1986-87 season, and he gobbled up the most offensive rebounds in three straight years from 1986 to 1989. He had a nose for the ball when it came off the rim, and he was great at quickly elevating after grabbing the rebound. As his game matured, he became a more polished scorer, particularly on the low block. And when he was with the Phoenix Suns, he was equally effective with his back to the basket and when he faced up, especially on the left side of the floor. He loved going to work on that left block and he had a bag of tricks that he used to outmaneuver defenders. He had a very quick first step. This is very Zion Williamson-esque. There weren't advanced stats available during Barkley's prime, but you have to figure he shot an incredibly high percentage near the basket. He actually led the league in two-point field goal percentage for five straight seasons from 1986 to 1991. In the 1989-90 season, in which he finished runner-up for the MVP award behind Magic Johnson, he shot 60% from the field overall. He made so many contested shots over defenders from the low post to the high post throughout his career. Although he never shot a great percentage from three-point distance, he did take a fair amount of them for that era. In fact, in his MVP 1992-93 season, he took 223s, which was 26th most in the league that year and third most among power forwards. He had a high kind of rainbow-like release if he played in today's era, he would have been a good floor spacer. Perhaps Barkley's most underrated quality was his passing. In today's NBA, he would without question be a terrific point forward. The offense, similar to how it is with Giannis in Milwaukee, would have run through Barkley as he had outstanding court vision, instincts, and awareness. And the fact that he could handle the ball up the floor would have made him a good play orchestrator in transition. He had some razzle-dazzle with his passing too, sometimes making long outlet passes that hit teammates in stride, or he'd go behind the back out of the post and find cutters. His best assist season of his career was in his MVP 1992-93 year, when he averaged 5.1 of them per contest. He had 20 triple doubles in his career, six during that MVP season, he once had 14 dimes in a game during the 1986-87 campaign. 
While he wasn't known for his defense, and perhaps in today's game he'd possibly be a liability in isolation situations because of his lack of length and questionable lateral movement, Barkley did have some shining moments on the defensive end. He had some memorable blocks throughout his career. For his career, Barkley averaged 22.1 points, 11.7 rebounds, 3.9 assists, 1.5 steals, and 0.8 blocks across 1,073 games. Where he deserves to rank on the all-time power forwards list is certainly debatable. He often gets a ding for never winning a championship, but still, he's probably a top six power forward all time. The others in that conversation are Tim Duncan, Karl Malone, Dirk Nowitzki, Kevin Garnett, and now of course Giannis Antetokounmpo. Guys like Elvin Hayes, Bob Pettit, and Dolph Shays deserve to be mentioned as well. So that will wrap up this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. I will continue to do more player analysis features for current and former players.